cool. Neat colors. Mm, it's ugly. Drop it. Dad doesn't need any ties, honey. He doesn't wear the ones he has. How about a hat? The hat looks great on you. <laughs> I don't, however, think it's really oh. him. Maybe a wallet? No. We got him a wallet last year. Come on, girls. We have to make up our minds. I have to get back to work. What do you think? It's boring. Boring. Is it? Carly? <laughs> oh my God, what a coincidence. Hi, Martha. Hi, Mrs. Elias. God, what a beautiful sweater. Mr. Elias will love it. Okay, okay, fine. Go ahead. But take this stuff. Oh, Mom. I'll be home by five. Okay, thanks. Oh, Carly, will you put in the chicken? Around eh, 3.50. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Do you have anything a little less boring? Bad day. Natalie didn't show up, so I had to cover her phones. Then Carly and Lisa both deserted me at the mall. But hey, let's get rid of the car. This is ridiculous. We can't. Not right now. Oh, I know. It's just so damned annoying. So are the kids. We don't get rid of them. Don't tempt me. I know, I know, I just bought all those You're just getting for... home. Just now. And the chicken. What about the chicken? I didn't buy her a thing. I can't believe it. Look, Mom, the lady at the store took forever to You ring. are so irresponsible. I can't even count on you to put a lousy chicken in the oven. God, Mom, you know, the world is not going to come to an end because we eat dinner a half an hour late. No, no, and it's not going to come to an end when I make you take that back, either. Oh, Another baby? How old is Mrs. Dreamer? Well, Dorian's 12 and Amy's 15. So she's got to be at least mom's age. Ah, uh, and they still do it? Carly, lots of people look great at 40. You know, look at, look at Michelle Pfeiffer. I gotta go change. Michelle Pfeiffer's 34. You don't have to suck up to us, Greg. We already like you. Well said. By the way, how do you happen to know Michelle Pfeiffer's exact age? She and I are having an affair. And I'm going to run away with her. Ah, well, would you remember to take the trash on your way out? You are so understanding. I know. That's a great meal, Mrs. Elias. Personally, I thought the chicken was a little underdone. <clears throat> I'm all set. Man, you look terrific. Thanks, Carly. Well, good night, everyone. We'll be home early. See you. Carly. Mom, I told you it's going back. You can't be serious. Maybe it'll teach you to be home on time from now on. Fine. Fine. Maybe next time I just won't come home at all. She is always testing me, you know? It's driving me nuts. She's a teenager, for God's sake. It's illegal to get along with your mother at that age. I know. I just hate being a bad cop all the time. Oh, I'll forget her and arrest me, officer. I've been bad, too. Oh, well, prove it. <laughs> oh, wait. What about Michelle? Oh, don't worry. She doesn't even know I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, the shading is so.
so subtle. You like it? Yeah. What else have you been working on? I wouldn't add anything else to it. It's great. It's really great. Can you believe these drawings? I haven't seen them. Wow. Wow, look at that. That's great. I love that. They're really not that good. I gotta go. Sound familiar? <laughs> Me and Mom, hundred years ago. Tell her how good they are. Tell her how good she, she won't take it from me. Don't be like Mom. Don't make excuses. Look, I um, I ordered some extra ice for the party, but I'm not going to be off until four. Could you or Dick pick it up? Sure. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. Oh, damn. Lissa, would you go get the ham out of the oven? Okay. Greg, would you do me a big favor? Yeah. There's a whole bunch of folding chairs in the garage. Will you get them and put them around in the den? Yeah. Thanks, hon. Where's the bag? A bag. You don't have a bag. You forgot the James Brown tape, didn't you? What tape, Mom? You didn't oh, say anything. Oh, Carly, I told you three Mom, times. I really Mom! Mom! <laughs> I had to go to three stores to get it. Oh. Guess James ain't as hot as he used to be, huh? Mom, will you relax? This party is going to be great. You really think so? Absolutely. Mom wants you. Now. Yeah? Napkins? Oh, God. Carly, I asked you three times. This is so typical. Look, Mom, let's not start, okay? I'll go and I'll get them now. Don't even bother. I'll go myself. Mom, I said I'd get them. I'm sorry I'm always such a disappointment to you. Carly. Hi, Anna. Hello. Presents. Where do we stash them? Laura? Is everything okay? Yeah. Everything's fine. It's my mom's car. It always breaks down. Want me to try? Sure. Okay. That'd be great. Thank sure. you. Sure. Let's see. Yeah, well. I'm sorry. I'm not too good with cars. <laughs> But uh, I can give you a lift. No, thanks. Are you sure? It's really no problem. Good night. The car's right over there. Okay. You're good. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. I'm Peter. I'm Carly. I'm Carly. It's pretty nice. Thank you. I'm right here. Hide. Put out the lights. 
This is really a beautiful car. It's a hassle that people keep trying to steal it. <laughs> Go to school around here? No. It's not much farther. I thought sure you knew. <laughs> when I was on the phone with the liquor store. I had no idea. Thanks, honey. Where's Carly? Oh God, stop! Please stop. We have to go back. I forgot the napkins. Ugh. I'm serious. My mother will kill me. She's having this party. I'm sorry. There's a gas station right up here we can turn around at. Oh, damn it. I'm gonna be so late. Here it is. It's right up here. Just turn around. What's going on? Can you hear me? Do you know some other way or something? What's going on? What are you doing? What's going on? I like you, Carly. Such, um, you have such beautiful hair. Not a word. That's everyone. Hello?
You know, just uh, come back here. Greg found the car. It was at the shopping center. It was locked. No sign of her. What time is it? It's midnight. Call the police. to ID the body. It doesn't need to be a parent, a friend, or another relative is okay. I'll do it. The Hicklins. Dick's going to the store for coffee. Do you need anything? <laughs> Why don't you let me do that? Mm -hmm. I can't figure out what she'd want to wear. I just can't. We'll find something. Something she'd like. Is this okay for Carly? Laura wanted me to ask you. Carly. <coughs> Carly was the most important thing in the world to me. I mean, she always made me feel so wonderful. I mean, I just can't. I cannot believe this is even happening. I feel like I'm gonna wake up and everything is gonna be just the way it used to be. I don't see her smiling at me. I loved her so much. She was my best friend. Anybody that ever met Carly could tell you that she was the best person I'm gonna miss her so much. I can't. I can't even stand to think about not having her in my life. Goodbye, Carly. Hi. Nobody's home right now. Please leave a message at the beep. Hello, Mr. Elias. This is Elias. This is Detective Pierce. Hello. This is Elias. The prints that we have from the suspect in custody match with the prints we got off the car. We're going to book him. Thank you. They got him. I'm standing in the hallway of the Fuller County Courthouse. The trial is set to begin. Peter Lipton. 
accused of the rape and killing of young Carly Elias. Elias' family has already made their own in. Listen, what about listen? Eileen is picking her up and she's taking her to practice. Get in front of parking space, I'm sorry. Good morning, Mrs. Elias. I just. Michael. The defendant has entered a plea of not guilty to the charge of rape and not guilty to the charge of murder in the first degree. The prosecution now has the burden to prove to you that the defendant, Peter Lipton, is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Then she paid for the napkins and left. I remember everything about it. She was my last customer that day. And she was so sweet. Then what happened? Then I closed up the shop. Now, Mrs. Clafter, after she left your store, did you see Carly Elias again? Yes, as I was walking to my car. What was she doing? She was talking to that young man. Where exactly was the body found? In the reeds on the south end of Lake Middlebury. Did you find any other evidence at that locale? Yes, sir. Tire tracks for one, leading right down the water's edge. And from those tracks, were you able to identify the tires? Yes, sir. They were Pirelli P600s. I see. Detective Lowe, what kind of car does the defendant Peter Lipton Drive. A black 1992 BMW 325i. With what kind of tires? Pirelli P600s. Carly Elias died from a jugular hemorrhage brought on by strangulation. Sounds like an ugly way to die. It is. A slow and excruciating way. Dr. Murray, did you see any signs of a struggle? Yes, there was skin and blood found under her fingernails. Hair, too. Skin, blood, and hair under her fingernails. Obviously, Carly Elias was fighting for her life. But whoever she was fighting was bigger than she was, and stronger, and brutally sadistic. Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Worrell is clearly possessed of a fine dramatic talent. This is not the forum in which to display it. Stick to questions, please, Mr. Worrell. Dr. Murray, what blood type was under Carly Elias's fingernails? B negative. And uh, Peter Lipton's blood type? B negative. And the skin and the hair? Cross-matched perfectly with samples from Peter Lipton. Were those the only calling cards left by Mr. Lipton? Objection, Your Honor. Was there any other evidence linking the defendant to the rape and murder of Carly Elias? Yes, his semen found in and on her body. Thank you. Mrs. Elias, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to disturb you. I, I, I just want to say how sorry I am about your daughter. Who is the defense going to call tomorrow? I can't imagine that there is any possible defense. Well, they'll think of something. Why don't you go home and get some rest? I can't believe the way he sits there. He's so arrogant. Yeah, arrogant and stupid. He didn't even bother to cover his tracks. What time do you want? Nine o'clock. Ben. Thanks. Peter wouldn't even join a fraternity. He thought they were sexist and a racist and completely out of touch with the times. Hmm. Sounds like a candidate for sainthood. <laughs> of course, uh, Barbara Samp might disagree. Objection! She's the other woman Peter Lipton attacked and raped. Counsel knows those charges were unsubstantiated. My apologies. Allegedly attacked and raped. My client was fully exonerated when those charges were dropped. They have no bearing at all in this case. Okay, Mr. Misseldine. Please disregard that last comment from Mr. Worrell. And you, Mr. Worrell, are too smart to be that stupid. Don't let it happen again. Go on ahead. I'll be right there.
Excuse me, Mrs. Elias. I'm Ian Nova's Channel 6 News. I wonder if you'd care to make a statement oh, no. on the trial. No. Mrs. Lipton did. She says it's all a tragic mistake. She says her son is innocent. I wouldn't expect his own mother to find him guilty. Mrs. Elias. But I guarantee you the jury will. Go with it. Go with it. Mrs. Elias. Hello, Miss Clafter. Now, you said that uh, Carly Elias came in and purchased some specially engraved napkins. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Did she seem to be in a hurry? A big one. She almost walked off without her change. And yet a while later, when you left the store, you saw her chatting with the defendant. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Miss Clapter, did Carly seem scared or intimidated while she was talking to Mr. Lipton? I object. Calls for speculation. Overruled. No. She stopped you? She asked for help. No. If anything, she ignored me. They were uh, talking and smiling, both of them. <clears throat> oh, Miss Clapter, do you remember what Carly was wearing? She was dressed up. Dressed up? How? Like for a school function? Or for church? Oh, no. No. Uh, she looked like a model, like you'd see in a magazine or something. What'd she have on? Your Honor, I strenuously objected to this entire line of questioning. How Carly Elias was dressed is totally irrelevant to the question of rape. We'll allow the question. <laughs> What'd she have on? A cute little black outfit, a sweater and a dress. Was the dress uh, short? It was very short, but I guess that's how the kids like them these days. Was the dress low cut? I'm going back to work tomorrow. What? I called Dennis. The place is falling apart. He can't handle it. Great. It's just great. May I be excused? You know, I could help out down there. A and so could Dick. Sure, that's a great idea. Thanks, but... But that's not the point, is it, Michael? Is it? No, that's not the point. The point is that I can't stand hearing my daughter called a whore. Michael, nobody believes that. The jury only knows what it hears. <laughs> they didn't know Carly. Sorry. Yeah. So am I. So, Mr. Hagelin, you and Carly Elias have been dating for... A year and a half. A year and a half. Long time. Must have gotten very close. Were you in love? Objection. Mr. Hagelin's relationship to the deceased is irrelevant. I'll rephrase the question. Counsel is way out of line here. Mr. Misseldine, make your point. That's exactly what I'm trying to do, Your Honor. Were you and Carly Elias having sex? 
Objection! Your Honor, I'm trying to establish that Carly Elias was a sexually mature young woman who knew exactly what she was doing when she initiated the encounter with Mr. Lipton. Your Honor, this goes way beyond... That is a lie, damn it! Counsel and witness are reminded that they are in a court. Carly would never have slept with anybody else. Ever. There's no way. We were faithful to each other. You're a witness, Mr. Worrell. initiate an encounter. I know that, but I'm just not sure I can prove it anymore. Oh, God. I don't understand. Right, what about the murder charge? Is that enough to put him away? Well, Miss Aldaya is going to claim that Carly initiated sex and that the sex got out of hand. He'll say there was no intent to kill her, no premeditation. You don't believe that. Of course I don't believe it, but what I believe doesn't matter. He's already planted reasonable doubt in the jury's He's mind. Dead. And he killed her. You know it, and I know it. And we can still get him. If I strike a deal, get him to plead to a lesser charge, second degree. And what if you can't? The jury might go with involuntary manslaughter. He could be out in two years. Oh, it's... Excuse me, Mr. Worrell. They want you in chambers. Thank you. Mr. Misseldine is changing his plea. Not guilty by reason of insanity. Until just this afternoon, the data we had were inconclusive. But now, we have new information. Information that proves beyond a doubt that Peter Lipton has been unjustly accused. The defense recalls Matthew Kohut. Peter Lipton drink? Yeah, about uh, 10 diet sodas a day. <laughs> you ever seen him take drugs? Absolutely not. Never. Not even for medicinal purposes? Oh, yeah, sure. And what kind? Uh, aspirin, cough medicine, the usual. Oh, and his allergy medication. He took that pretty regularly. Did you and Peter Lipton have lunch on the day of his alleged crime? Yeah, yeah, we did. You remember where you ate? Some Chinese place. Thanks. Dr. McPherson, how long have you been Peter Lipton's physician? Since he was 10, about 12 years. And is he, by and large, a healthy young man? Discounting his asthma, absolutely. And the asthma, uh, does it require medication? Peter has been using an over-the-counter inhalant for years. Thank you, Doctor. That's all. Does the prosecution wish to cross-examine? No, thank you, Your Honor. I have no questions. What's happening? What's he going for? The defense calls Roman Costner. So as a pharmacologist, would you say that a combination of Mr. Lipton's asthma medication and the MSG from the Chinese food and the alpha from the diet soda is potentially very dangerous? Oh, absolutely. In a susceptible host, uh, an irregular heartbeat or high blood pressure is possible, in some cases even seizures. Could a combination render him temporarily insane. Your Honor, I object. This is all just a bunch of speculative nonsense. Mr. Costner has brought with him all the pertinent scientific data to substantiate these claims. I'll allow it. Well, my studies indicate that the ingestion of all three elements simultaneously might easily trigger a psychotic episode. Can a victim of a psychotic episode become violent? Oh, absolutely. Very aggressive and violent. And yet a matter of minutes or hours later, he can awaken from this psychotic episode and have no recollection of what he's doing. That is correct. <laughs> Hi. Sorry I'm late. I 
We got real busy. I meant to call. Is Lisa in bed? He's pleading temporary insanity. Yeah, I know. I heard Michael, that. you should be there. I don't want to do this, Laura. I told you. You can't just walk away from this. Be there for her. She's gone, Laura. Nothing anybody in that courtroom does. Then be there for me, please. Can't you do that, please? I'm doing what I can. I'm doing the best that I can. going to jail, right? He's not going to hurt anyone ever again. I promise you. I promise you. Peter Lipton was not the victim of temporary insanity or of a so-called psychotic episode. Now, he was in complete control of his faculties when he lured an unsuspecting Carly Elias into his car and with total intent and malice aforethought, raped and then murdered an innocent girl. Now, during your deliberations in this case, I want you to try to forget all this medical innuendo you've heard, all this ludicrous evidence purchased from a self-proclaimed expert witness. Peter Lipton is guilty of an unspeakable crime. That is a fact. And it is upon that fact that you must base your decision. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention. The death of Carly Elias is a tragedy. But to ascribe guilt to this young man for that death would only be compounding that tragedy. Now, Peter Lipton did meet Carly Elias that night. Two of them to drive off together. And the two of them did choose to make love. But what happened after that was not for either of them a matter of conscious choice. Peter Lipton's not a rapist. He's not a murderer. He is the unwitting victim of a cruel chemical reaction that took from him his ability to tell right from wrong. Now you must find him innocent of the charges brought against him because he's innocent. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? We find the defendant, Peter Lipton, not guilty by reason of insanity. Lord, I'm sorry. Celebrate, get out of here. 
security. Now! I'm sorry to say it, but that's the way things work in cases like this. 90 days? Yeah. Standard for psychiatric evaluation. And if they find him sane, he'll walk? He'll be free to rape and murder some other girl? <gasps> How does this happen? It's a constant battle. I, I'm fighting it every day. You see, the law has to protect the accused from a potential lynch mob mentality. But sometimes the safeguards backfire. And then there's no justice. Not for the victims or for their families. I don't know what else to tell you. What am I going to do? I'm sorry, Laura. Ben Worrell. No, Eddie, I'll be in court tomorrow. Yeah, 9 o'clock. Eddie, you caught me at a... Laura? Get a ride home from school? I'm going to the mall. No more mall. I'll pick you up after school. You can't do that. I promised Dorian. Why can't you just go to the because mall? Because I said so. Be in front of school at 3.30. We're out of orange juice. Eggs, too. I can stop at the market on the way home. Fine. See you at night. This looks terrific, Eileen. Oh, thanks. I know how much you love leg of lamb. We have an idea. Dick and I are going to Washington in a couple of weeks, and we thought maybe Lissa could come with us. 
We could get a suite in a hotel. And she no. could come. Absolutely not. Well, I, I thought maybe you and Michael could use some time. You're not taking Lissa away from me, too. Laura, come on. Come on. Excuse us. She's your sister. She's trying to help. I'm sorry. Well, don't tell me. Tell her. Greg is dating Martha. Carly's boyfriend is dating her best friend. Don't you have anything to say about that? Yeah, I do. I say congratulations and best wishes. It's been four months, Laura. They're getting on with their lives, just like I am, and just like you have to. Yes, I'm still here. All right, tell Mr. Worrell that Laura Elias called. Again. Natalie. Hi, it's me. I'm not going to be in today. Would you cover for me? Thanks. Come in. Dr. Howard? Yes. I know it's late. Thank you for seeing me. Have a seat. My daughter is the girl that Peter Lipton killed. I know. I'm sorry. I want to know his status. That information is confidential. Look, my secretary is a temp. She didn't know any better. This meeting is highly unethical. I don't know if you understand. She was not the first girl that he raped. I'm not a lawyer or a judge, Mrs. Elias. I'm a psychiatrist. Now, I sympathize with your situation, but I cannot discuss Mr. Lipton's case with you. He, um, strangled her, then he dumped her body in the lake naked. She was still in high school. I'm sure this is a terrible ordeal for you, Mrs. Elias. Don't let him out. Please don't let him out. Please. I suggest you get professional help. Let me give you a number. I don't need help. I need justice. Excuse me. Yes. I'm Ruth, Dr. Howard's temp. I was supposed to type up some reports for her today. I didn't get around to it. Oh, no problem. Here's the key. And you just return it when you're done. Thanks.
Promise me you won't go out there again. And we'll try and see that doctor again. My God, we almost lost you too. Just please, for Lissy's sake, for our sake, let it go. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing anybody can do. I, I know, he's guilty. It makes me sick. He manipulated the system. We did everything right, and it still came out wrong. Can't we file an appeal? Can we find another judge? Isn't there something we can do? You Laura, know... we lost. The system lost. You gotta let it go. Mr. Samp, my name is Laura Elias. Could I come in and speak to you for just a minute? Would you please go away? I don't want my daughter to see you. Mr. Samp, Peter Lipton is being released in less than a week. I'm sorry. If you and your daughter could come with me to the police, maybe we'll... No. 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 We can't go through that again. If your daughter had pressed charges to begin with, he'd be in jail now. Don't you realize that? He never would have seen my daughter. She'd be alive. Would you please just go away and leave us alone? Please. Mrs. Sam, please. How you doing? Thanks for meeting me. Listen, you want to grab a cup of coffee? Or... He's being released. I know, I heard. He'll be out on the street again. Yeah. Must be rough for you. There was another rape. I think he paid off her parents. Can you prove that? No. <sighs> Mrs. Elias, that's no story. He'll do it again. You know he will. But Mrs. Elias... <sighs> then you'll have a story, won't you? That'll be front page news. Yeah, it will. <sighs> Her. And now he's a free man. 
You son of a bitch! He thinks he got away with it. Well, he didn't get away with it. You can't get away with that. Take a look at that face. He may do it again. Then it's going to be one of you. Remember that face. Your daughter could be next. Look at him. Look at him! Hi. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, man, look at this. I can't believe it. your day? It was good. It was really good. Okay, I understand. And she just walked in. I will. Yeah. You were what? That was Ben Worrell. Peter Lipton's taken out a restraining order on you. You're not allowed to get within a hundred feet of him. What the hell's going on, Laura? It's all right, honey. I'll get it. You go in the house. Let's have the lights. Hey, crazy lady. You should be more careful. About everything. Mom? Are you okay? Lisa, stay in the house! Go back in the house! Lisa. I like her. She's pretty. Thank you.
Why? What was going through your head? What were you thinking? He killed Carly. I killed him. Listen to yourself. You're destroying us. Our family. How are we supposed to survive this, too? I couldn't just get on with my life, Michael. I couldn't be like you. So now they lock you up for the rest of your life. Is that your answer? I did what had to be done. Somebody had to. Right this way, sir. Well, I went over the transcripts, some research, and I got to know your family last night, and I think if we work together, that we should be able to have every chance for a complete acquittal. We have to concentrate on your mental state, on your anguish, on the fact that you were driven beyond reason by grief, on the fact that you've lost touch with What are you me. saying? I'm saying that we have to plead not guilty by reason of insanity. I plead on the... Well, it's the only way we can plead. No. No. Never. I have to talk to you, Ben. You shouldn't be here. We need your help. I can't help you. You don't understand. Something's happened. I do she's... understand, Michael. Perfectly. She's suffered. So have you. Everyone has. Then do something. Find a way to get her out of this. She killed a man. I've got to prosecute her. Believe me, I hate to go through with it, but it's the law. You know that. I have no choice. Is this difficult for you? First you represent her, and now you prosecute her. Well, you have to remember that at no time did I ever represent Mrs. Elias. I represented the people of the state. Will special consideration be given her because of her daughter's murder? It boils down to this. Nobody can be allowed to take the law into their own hands, regardless of the circumstances. Do you think she did the community a service killing this guy? There's no room for the so-called vigilante in our judicial system. Thank you. Laura Elias, how do you plead to the charge of murder in the first degree? Uh, Your Honor, in view of the special circumstances surrounding this case, Laura Elias' emotional state and her lack of legal knowledge, I elect to enter my client's plea for her. To the charge of murder, my client, Laura Elias, pleads not guilty by reason of insanity. Absolutely not. I won't allow it. Mrs. Elias, I'll determine what's allowed here and what isn't. I'll see counsel and defendant in chambers immediately. Your Honor, you have to stop this trial. My patience is minimal on my best day. Don't exhaust it further. Your Honor, the defendant's husband and I feel that it would be in my client's best interest to remove her from any direct participation in this trial. We intend to prove that my client's state of mind has been so precarious since the death of her daughter. No, no I am not insane. I meant to do it. Now, I want a new attorney. I won't go back in the courtroom unless I have a new attorney. This case is loaded enough without these theatrics, Mrs. Elias. Ms. Leeds will continue as your attorney. It is clear to me that she has your best legal interests at heart, and that is all any client can ask of her lawyer. I'll walk. You do that, and I'll revoke your bail so fast you'll be back in jail before your head stops spinning. And you, Ms. Leeds, will henceforth apprise your client of any and all plans for her defense. What you did isn't illegal, but it sure as hell isn't ethical either. Any more surprises, and I'll find you in contempt. Did he proposition you? No. Did he threaten you in any way? No, he was nice. Polite. What did you talk about? He wanted to buy me a soda. That's it? That's it. And the woman who bought this gun? Do you see her here in this courtroom? 
Let the record show that the witness is indicating the defendant, Laura Elias. When did she take possession of the gun? April 4th. April 4th. A full week and a half before she used it to murder Peter Lipton. Prosecution calls Mrs. Blair Lipton to the stand. Has your life changed since the death of your son? What kind of a question is that? What do you expect me to say? Please, Mrs. Lipton, answer the question. I don't eat. I don't sleep. I don't really have a life, Mr. Worrell. Do you go out? Do you see friends? Is there a point to all of this? Your Honor, would you bear with me, please? No, I don't go out and I don't see friends. How would you characterize your mental state? Objection. Witness is in no condition to evaluate her own mental health. Thank you. Exactly my point. Your Honor, I am trying to establish that Mrs. Lipton is every bit as tormented and disturbed as the defendant is purported to be. Isn't that true, Mrs. Lipton? Wouldn't you say that the death of your son, your only child, has driven you crazy with grief? How can you ask a question like that? Don't you feel twisted and deranged and demented from the sheer horror of it all? Please. Do you find yourself thinking about how much your son must have suffered? Do you think about the five bullets ripping through his body? Mr. Worrell. Mrs. Lipton, do you want to kill Laura Elias? Could you kill the woman who murdered your son? No. Thank you, Mrs. Lipton. Your witness. Today, Assistant District Attorney Ben Worrell called his final witness to refute the defense's plea of temporary insanity. The testimony revealed that Mrs. Elias had been stalking the victim several days prior to the shooting. Turn it off. One witness introduced... You eating anything? Want a hamburger? Are you crazy, Mommy? Baby, I don't think I am. I don't. I'm just not sure that counts for much. They put you on the stand and you spill your guts and you're as good as behind bars. And, 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 and if Worrell gets his murder won, they could put you away for life. For life, Laura, do you understand? You just put me on the stand. Best case scenario, the jury comes back with voluntary manslaughter and they'll put you away for 11 years. I know what you're going through, but I can't let you throw your life away on an empty principle. Marie, you don't know what I'm going through. You have no idea what I'm going through, so don't lecture me about ethics and principles you can't possibly understand. December 16th, 1987, 4 a.m. I remember exactly what the cops said. I am very sorry to tell you this, ma'am, but your daughter's been killed. Her body's down at the morgue. Could you please come down and identify it for us? It was her boyfriend. She never told me he'd been beating her up. He used to come to my house for dinner. Every Tuesday night, he'd sit across. I didn't leave the house for a year. He's living now in Tucson. Got a wife, two kids. Never served a damn day. I'm doing this for both of us, Laura, because I do. I, I know how you feel. Come on. The defense calls Mrs. Laura Elias. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do.
Mrs. Leeds? Uh, no questions, Your Honor. More theatrics, Mrs. Leeds? No, Your Honor. My client insists upon taking the stand against my wishes. I see. Does the prosecution have any questions? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Let the record show that Mrs. Elias has agreed to waive her Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Mrs. Elias, how long have you and I known each other? Uh, about six months, I guess. And for at least one of those months, we, we worked closely together, didn't we? Yes, we did. And during that time, we uh, got to know each other. And we got into the habit of speaking quite openly with each other. Is that correct? Yes. And on more than one occasion, did you not express to me your outrage at both the verdict and the sentence handed down in the case of Peter Lipton, the man who killed your daughter? Yes, I did. And did you not visit me after the trial, also on more than one occasion, to ask me... Ben, let me make it easier for you. I killed Peter Lipton because he killed my daughter and no one did anything about it. He raped her and he murdered her and everyone knew it. The court knew it, his lawyer knew it, his own mother knew it. And no one made him pay. I came to you, and I begged you for help. But you did nothing. The police did nothing, the press did nothing. My own husband told me to forget it and get on with my life. Well, I couldn't do that. So I bought a gun, and I followed him. And when I saw him talking to that girl, who looked so much like my, my Carly. I knew I could not bring Carly back, but I could keep it from happening again. So I walked up to him and I shot him. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was sane then and I am sane now, but I will not lie to protect myself like he did. I meant to kill Peter Lipton, just like he meant to kill my daughter. We will recess for 15 minutes. Your Honor, defense wishes to redirect. Witness will retake the stand.
Mrs. Elias, you're still under oath. Have you ever had a traffic ticket? No. Parking ticket? No. No, not one. How could that be? I read the street signs. Have you ever shoplifted? No. Stolen a car? Of course not. Broken into anyone's house? Objection, Your Honor. Mrs. Elias's past has nothing to do with this case. It has everything to do with this case. Overruled. Answer the question. Have you ever broken into anyone's house? No, never. Before the day when you shot Peter Lipton, had you ever knowingly broken the law? No, not that I know. You had never knowingly broken the law, and yet you would have us believe that you were in full, complete control of your faculties. When you walked into that mall in broad daylight and in front of dozens of witnesses shot and killed an unarmed man. Yes. Have you been on any kind of medication since the death of your daughter? Laura? Yes, but... Just it... answer yes or no, please. Was this medication prescribed by your doctor? But not... Yes or no? Yes. Did that medication have to do with... Objection. Counsel is badgering her own witness. Ms. Leeds, let the witness answer the question. Did your doctor prescribe that medication for hypertension, exhaustion, and extreme anxiety? Yes. How long were you on that medication? About six months. Had you ever taken mood-altering drugs before? No. So when you shot Peter Lipton, you were under the influence of a... I stopped taking the pills a week before I shot him. In other words, you were in withdrawal from a powerful drug that was your only connection to mental stability. Objection. Calls for a medical conclusion. I knew exactly what I was doing. I don't think so. I don't think so. Ms. Leeds. Have you cried since the day your daughter died? Did you cry at the morgue when you identified her body? Or at the funeral? Did you cry when you were back home all alone in her room? Where you spent the night surrounded by all her things? Do you think that's normal, Laura? Do you think that's natural for a mother not to cry at the death of her child? It's not normal or natural to lose a child. What was your relationship with your daughter? She was a teenager. I was her mother. It was typical. Did you love her? Of course I loved her. And yet you never cried? Do you remember what you said to her that night before she left the house? Were you angry with her? Do you remember what she said to you? What was it? She, she said she was sorry. We had a fight. I told her she was irresponsible. She was always such a disappointment to me. What happened then? 
Kardeşim. Did you follow her? Did you tell her she wasn't a disappointment to you? Did you run after her and stop her and tell her that you loved her? You feel responsible, don't you? You think you let her walk right out of the house and into Peter Lipton's car. You're consumed with the guilt of it all. And that guilt has eaten away at you and poisoned your perception of right and wrong. Your mind is overwhelmed with grief. And it's made you say and do things that are not under your control. You are not a killer, Laura. You are a mother who has endured the greatest tragedy of all. The murder of her child. Was not Laura Elias who bought that gun and took it to the mall and pulled the trigger? But a desperate woman driven insane by anguish and injustice. Injustice. You can't punish her any more than she's punished herself. You can't find her any more guilty than she's already found herself. Ben Worrell wants to talk to you. Laura, I'm willing to drop the first-degree murder charge and let you plead guilty to voluntary manslaughter. And I'll recommend leniency. Voluntary can still get you a long time in prison. I told him that we wouldn't take it, that we were going to win. I took the law into my own hands. I'm willing to pay the price for it. We've paid enough. Listen to Marie. She's right. You can fight this. You can go free. Michael. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But I killed a man and I can't just walk away from that. I'll take it. Laura Elias, you have pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter. Because of the circumstances of your crime and the lack of any prior misdeeds, it is obvious to me that you represent no threat to any individual or society at large. I thereby sentence you to two years incarceration at the State Correctional Facility for Women to be followed by three years probation. There's been enough anger, enough hatred, and enough bloodshed. These proceedings are concluded.